Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, fermented purple tea. In this video, I'm gonna be tasting a very unique tea, the latest addition to our cooked pua tea selection. If at any point in time you enjoy this video, then make sure you hit it with a like. And if you're not following us on all of our socials, then go click that button. Finally, I get to release this extremely unique tea for me. This is Gem Juice Outlaw. Take a look at the cover. As always, designed by Celine. This is Gem Juice Outlaw. I know that these uh, pictures, some of them have been leaked already, but finally I can announce it officially. One of the most unique teas that we've tasted this year, Gem Juice Outlaw, a cooked pua tea. Let me quickly give you a bit of background about this tea. This tea is a cooked pua tea, but it is made from purple tea trees. What do I mean by that? Well, I've done a full video all about purple tea. I'll put a link in the description below. But a quick recap, purple tea is not a separate type of tea. It's not like oolong tea or black tea or yellow tea because those are dependent upon processing. With purple tea, it's all about the fact that the leaves are having a purple hue or a purple color. This can happen in nature naturally. The plant can react to certain environmental stresses and can sprout purple. This is very rare that tea is made from these purple sprouting leaves, but instead you can also get varieties of tea of the tea plant which naturally sprout purple leaves. There's some in Kenya, so a lot of purple tea coming out of Africa, and there are also these wild tea plants specifically growing around the Dehong region of Yunnan. These wild Yusheng uh, varieties, they tend to have purple leaves as well. And we have one tea made from that called Purple Bud. Again, I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check out that tea. However, there's also another type of naturally sprouting purple leaf tea variety, and that's called the Zhejuan variety. Zhejuan variety. The Zhejuan variety is actually more of a kind of man-made hybrid. It comes from crossing a Fujinese purple sprouting tea with the Asamica variety, so the stories go, around the kind of late 80s, 90s. And since then, this created hybrid cultivar has been cultivated all around Yunnan province. Not in huge amounts, but it certainly has been cultivated. Now, in the video that I did about purple tea, I said that I wasn't very into the Zhejuan variety. There's something that tastes very lightweight about it. It doesn't have the depth that comes, I feel, from natural hybridization. And I have gone to Yunnan many times and I've tasted Zhejuan tea. And I have one particular farmer that has been trying to get me onto Zhejuan tea for a while. I first went there and he, he gave me some raw pu'er tea made with Zhejuan and I knocked it back. I then went back there and he gave me some green tea made from the Zerjuan and some black tea made from the Zerjuan. Again, very pretty color, kind of this pink purple hue to it. And it has a very interesting light, um, slightly citrusy taste to it, but I always felt it was a little bit too thin and I always knocked it back and I said no. This year, when I went to Yunnan province, the farmer pulled out some cooked pu'er tea. This is the first time that I had tasted a cooked or ripe pu'er tea made with the Zerjuan cultivar. The moment I tasted this batch, I tasted a few, but the moment I tasted this Gong Ting, very fine picking batch, I fell in love with it and we had to make some cakes. So the result is this, Gem Juice Outlaw. Let me quickly scope the tea for you. So <clears throat> this is season, this is spring 2003. 13. So this has been picked in 2013, it was cooked in 2013 or fermented in 2013 and it's been uh, aged for five years to really dissipate any of that fermented smell and really get a very clean tasting tea. So it's been fermented in 2013 and stored in Menghai since then. This is now 2018 that I'm speaking to you. Cultivar, as I said, this is the Zerjuen purple variety. The origin, this comes from the Bulang Mountain area in Yunnan province in China, where they produce all of this great pua tea. Picking and processing, as I said, this is a ripe pua tea, which means it's gone through a fermentation process. The picking on it is very fine gong ting pickings. 
The Gongting pickings are very young leaves and buds, the finest picking for ripe pu'er. And then it's gone through the fermenting or ripening process. For those of you who don't know, that means that they pile up these leaves on floors which have been seeded with these kind of microorganisms. They keep the leaves in piles in a hot and humid, wet environment, and that allows the tea to ferment. It's a very skilled and labor-intensive process, but it produces excellent ripe tea. The elevation is 1,200 meters. Okay, as I said, when I first tasted this tea in Yunnan this year, I immediately, this was the first time I looked at him and said, you got me, you got me. Okay, now I'm interested in this Zerjuen variety. And I think for me, it's one of the most unique teas that we've tasted this year. <clears throat> Artwork by Celine, as I said, what we have here is a magpie and the magpie is stealing away a necklace, but I'm gonna talk more about what that necklace represents later. The name of this tea, as I said, Gem Juice Outlaw. Let's take a look at these leaves, shall we? Take a look at that. Really, really, really dark leaves. Dark, but you can see a slight purple hue to it. I'll bring it to this camera. Hopefully you can see that there's a slight purple hue to it. It's not your average raw, uh, ripe, I should say, ripe pu'er which has more of those kind of um, browns and chestnuts. This is much more got that slightly cooler tint to it looking a little bit more purple to it. Right, let's dig into this. I am excited to taste this tea. It's been a few weeks since I've tasted it. Now what we're gonna do is I'm brewing in this Jen Shui pot. This Jen Shui pot is about to come in or has come in, so check it out if you're looking online and we're gonna do a video about Jen Shui pots. Um, so stay tuned for that, right. These leaves look beautiful. So this uh, pot is 180, I, 180 mil, I recommend about five grams of this per 100 mil. So we're gonna be doing something like about eight grams of this tea. Let's see how easy it is to break. See, it's very easy, you don't even really need the pick. What's that? That's four. I am gonna take the pick out to avoid breaking too much. This is a 100 gram cake, but because this is a cooked pu'er tea, it's not so difficult to break. 100 gram cakes for raw teas can be much more challenging, as I'm sure many of you are very well aware of. There you go, 8.23. That sounds good to me. I'm gonna put this away, wrap it up quickly. Okay, we're gonna be brewing with 99 degree water, very hot water, that's what I recommend. Um, you can go slightly cooler if you would like to control a little bit of the astringency, but as you'll see, this tea is all about that astringency, so don't be too frightened of brewing hot. So I've got some hot water here. This is going into our Gen Shui pot. Gen Shui pot's great for cooked pu'ers. So we're just gonna warm this teaware up. I'm gonna pour a little bit on top as well. Because it's clay and it's thick, it's gonna take a little bit more energy to warm it up. As I said, we're gonna do some videos about Gen Shui pots, but you can check it out now. Okay, let's stick these leaves. Oh, we've got to break them up. The beautiful thing about these Gong Ting pickings is you just literally need to pinch, a, pinch them and they will crumble into lovely leaves without you breaking too much of the leaf. But because this has been fermented and ripened, it's going to be a lot more broken. Beautiful color, as I said purple black but you can also see that there's some little chestnut buds in here as well little chestnut colored buds hiding in amongst all of that deep purple brown black 
Okay, let's pour these in and let's give this a smell. So, nose dry leaf, nice warm pot. So the Zerjuen variety and what you're going to hear me saying a fair amount, I think, in this video is has this very zesty, bright character to it. And I think the reason why I didn't really respond to it with the black teas and the green teas is I felt that that bright citrusy character came out too much and it didn't kind of have enough balance to it because with those raw teas, you may want some of that citrus, but you also want that honeyed sweetness or you want that uh, smooth syrupiness to it. Whereas this felt much more bright, much thinner, much more citrusy. But when you ripen the tea, you get this fascinating juxtaposition between the warmth, the fudginess, the, yes, some wet cavern, but really much more about walnuts and caramel and fudge. And then it's, and then that juxtaposition um, plays really with the citrusy notes of this. So you get also getting lime and you're getting lemon. And at first sniff, it's a bit disconcerting because you're getting this warmth and then you're getting the citrus all in the same breath and it feels like this tea surely can't work together. It's fascinating, but you can't imagine that it works together on the mouth. It's, it's, it's really interesting smell. Let's give this a wash. Pour the wash in here. Right, you can already see, I hope, that the color of this liquor has this kind of slightly pink, rose, rosy, pinky hue to it, which is this purple cultivar. Pour this in here. Right, here we go. Let's give this a sniff. So what's happening is that those two extremes, that warm, nutty, fudgy, and the zesty lime lemon are starting to come together here. I'm getting cranberries, dried cranberries, sour tang, but now starting to get a bit sweeter. Cranberries, jujube, those uh, red dates, which is a very um, common uh, aroma profile in cooked puers. So you can imagine those red dates going to cranberries, very, very, tangy but sweet dried berries and I'm still getting some of that warmth but the, the fudginess has turned more into a slight chocolatiness and make my mouth water a little bit like um, brownies milk chocolate brownies slightly burnt milk chocolate brownies with red date and dried cranberry. So you can see how that's starting to merge. If you can imagine those flavor profiles, that starts to sound a lot more delicious than fudge and lime. Okay, let's brew this up. So we're gonna be brewing approximately 10 seconds-ish, something like that. I'm gonna go through a filter just because I know that with this Fermented cooked tea, you're gonna get more broken leaf. Okay, let's pour that away. Beautiful color. We'll take the lid off. And I will show you the color of this liquor. Hard to see it through the camera, but with the light shining through, there's a definite pinky hue to it. It's got like a purple, gray, brown, with a pinky hue to it, definitely different to your average cooked pua. You can certainly see that this has been made with a different variety. I'll pour some actually in a white cup just so you can hopefully see it a little bit clearer. Lighter than your average cooked pua and definitely with a little bit more pinks and purple hues going on in there. Cheers everybody. 
let's focus on texture. The texture on this, because it's a Zergenti, it is light, juicy. It's still smooth in the mouth. Still got that nice, smooth character that you're looking for in a ripe tea. But it's definitely lighter in body and juicier. What do I mean by that? Immediately, I can feel an intense physicality coming out when I have the liquor in my mouth. I can feel like as if you've kind of sucked on a, a lemon. You're not getting the acidity, but you're getting that reaction where your mouth is kind of reacting to the minerals, the compounds in the tea, and you're getting that juiciness developing. Really, at first sip, very refreshing, very quenching. Right, let's focus on some flavor profiles here. What I'm getting is, again, this marriage between warmth, we're talking about nuts, like I, I would say, um, I said walnuts before, I think so, walnuts, pecan nuts, uh, chestnuts, those sweeter, more flowery nuts. And then you're getting on the aftertaste, this very distinct tang. The tang is, is like uh, currants, black currants, red currants. Again, not the sourness that's related to it, but the feeling and this kind of tangy uh, note when you breathe out through your nose, almost like you've had a lemon or you've had some red currants, which are very kind of tart, and after you've swallowed, it's just left with this, through the nose, this tangy, uh, fruity note to it. And the reason why we call this Gem Juice Outlaw and we have this uh, imagery is because we tasted a lot of those juicy berry fruits. So the magpie is stealing away a necklace made with either black currants or red currants. You can see the detail there, hopefully, in the necklace, that it's a necklace made up of currants, specifically black currants and red currants, because that tang, that acidity, again, not in taste, but in feeling, is what makes this Zerjuan tea so special. Because when it was produced as a black tea or as a raw pua tea, I didn't feel that balance worked. But with this cooked pua, it's just so fascinating. It's such an interesting flavor profile. You're getting that kind of, a little bit of chocolate still going on. I'm getting burnt brownies, I'm getting chestnut puree and all of those nice warm sweet notes and then after you've swallowed I'm getting red currant, I'm getting black currant, I'm getting cranberries and red dates. I'm gonna brew up another one here so we can get a stronger infusion and then I'm gonna start, start to talk to you about probably my favorite part of this tea apart from the taste and that is the finish on this tea. Mmm, yum, yum. I'm also getting a spice towards the end, like um, vanilla and a little bit of fennel. It's not too anise -y for those of people who are allergic to anise. It doesn't have that, but just a little fennel, fennel sweetness coming through. A little fennel sweetness and um, some vanilla coming through as well. I'm going to try unfiltered. Let's see what this Gen Shui can do in terms of filtering out the leaf. Not too shabby. Looks good. Oh. Okay, second infusion. I will show you the color of the liquor. Pretty similar, so it's gonna be consistent this. You're gonna get definitely over 10 infusions, closer to probably 15 infusions out of this. It is lighter than your average ripe pua, so you might not be able to extend way past 12 infusions, but as you'll see, this is the character of this tea. Mm, much stronger. 
I'm getting those chestnut purees. I'm getting walnut whips. I don't know if you um, know those. Walnut whips is uh, something that we had in, in the UK, probably still have, which is milk chocolate with like a walnut cream inside and a walnut on top. I'm getting that. But then the spices come in, vanilla, fennel sweetness, red currant, black currant, really, really nice. Now let's talk about the finish on this tea because the finish on this tea, as you may be hearing, is extremely physical. This is a very physical tea. Immediately after you swallow, you swallow it is dry. It is bone dry all the way from the tip of my tongue, all the way to the back of my throat, it's like this really, really quenching mineral dryness. No bitterness. There's no bitterness in here. It's just a quenching mineral dryness that is quite extreme. And the joy of this tea is sipping on it, letting that dryness set in, breathing out through your nose, getting that tang of the black currant, the cranberries, and waiting and slowly slowly the dryness releases and you get this tingling salivating sensation which is now starting to come starting the back sides of my tongue moving forwards so my my tongue starts to become juicy and lubricated with this gentle syrupy sweetness but it's still very very quenching and the last part which releases is in your throat. Suddenly you get this release and this transformation from bone dry, from really probably one of the most dry teas that I've tasted in a while. And the fact that it, it, the dryness covers everywhere with no bitterness, it's very interesting. And then as you wait, it just kind of tingles and releases and it's so pleasant. It's like you, you either have a choice you either um, um, lubricate your mouth by drinking more, which makes the tea very Moorish. You keep wanting to drink more because you get this dryness set in and then you want that liquor in your mouth, or you wait. And as you wait, it releases and you get this kind of cooling, kind of sweet and still slightly tangy aftertaste. It is absolutely fascinating. For me, one of the most unique teas that I've tasted this year. As I said, the moment I tried it, I knew I had to get some in because this is something different. Really, really, really refreshing, quenching, and just <laughs> such a fascinating experience. They come in 100 gram cakes. I highly recommend picking up a 100 gram cake just to experience this physical sensation and this strange marriage between warm, fudgy, vanilla, and sour, tart, tang. The combination is just so, so interesting. Body sensation on this. I'm getting warmth. I'm getting perspiration. In general, I find that this tea gives me more of an uplifting feeling than your average uh, cooked pu'er, which tends to be for me more settling, a little bit more kind of loungy, sit back. This feels like it's giving me a little bit more energy, a bit more lift to it. So um, it's interesting. I think that different people will react differently to this tea. Let's quickly smell this empty Gong Dao Bay. <sighs> totally, totally, and utterly different from any ripe pu'er empty cup or empty Gong Dao Bay I've ever smelt. This has a saltiness to it. It has like a briny nature, like olives. It's like green olives. Um, yeah, it's got this really interesting salty aroma to it. But then there's also a sweetness as well. I'm also getting some of those brownies, burnt brownies, milk chocolate. There's a, a slight burnt, uh, like almost like sherbet. Um, acidity with a burnt note to it. I'm trying to kind of piece them together. Um, maybe the smell of um, uh, um, matches which have been struck and extinguished. So if you uh, strike a match, let it burn and then just extinguish it. Very gentle, 
there's the, that, that slight burnt note coming through. But again, like burnt brownies as well. And then this sherbetty acidity that comes through as well. Really, really interesting, as I said, unlike any other ripe tea that I've ever tasted, um, a fascinating tea, the Gem Juice Outlaw. Highly recommend trying, adding to your collection. Here you go, guys. Go check it out if you can. Gem Juice Outlaw, Zerjuen Gong Ting, cooked tea from 2013. Such a fascinating tea, really, really is. I think that there's gonna be more and more cooked pu'er teas made with the Zerjuen cultivar. That's my prediction because the flavor profile on it is totally and utterly unique. That's it, tea heads. If you made it to the end of this video, then make sure you hit it with a like. Follow us on all of our socials so you don't miss out on any news and videos from Mayleaf HQ. If you're ever in London, then come visit us in Camden to say hi and taste our wares. If you have any questions, comments, or video ideas, then please fire them over. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.